Mm. All right, so this soup kind of sucks. Um, I wouldn't recommend that you make it, at least not the way that I just did it. So if you want to make some asparagus soup, go find a good recipe because this ain't it. Ted, you're famous. Everyone loves you. You're a YouTube sensation. All right, today is whatever you have left in your refrigerator day. We're going to figure out what to do with it. At least that's what it is for me today. Super low energy today, guys. We've got to get that energy up there. Still in my jam jams. I pretty much wanted to just go back to bed after I woke up this morning. I don't know how many of you guys are on board with that whole vibe, but we've got to say no to sleeping and eating all day and just basic depression. I know I'm teetering every so often. So we're gonna, I'm doing this, actually I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this for you, but I'm doing this for me because uh, we just need to keep busy, right? So I pulled out some asparagus stalks that I had in the freezer. I actually have two bags of them. Um, I, I eat a lot of asparagus, but you know, like the bottom part, the stalky woody part is always um, stalky and woody. So you sort of break that part off or you cut the little nubby ends off, but I don't throw them away. I put them in a bag and I just keep stocking up on them and I freeze them. And so today I'm going to make some asparagus mushroom soup. Um, I don't really have a recipe for it. I kind of just throw everything into the pot and see what happens. So um, we're going to do that. I also have a couple of blocks of tempeh. I always feel like the tempeh doesn't have an expiration. Oh, here it is. Yeah, got a couple of weeks. So I'm going to marinate this tempeh because, um, and I just leave it in the fridge and then whenever I want to just like fry up a piece of it, usually I turn them into Reuben sandwiches. Oh my God. Like sandwiches is definitely my downfall. I love eating sandwiches, but I can't eat them all the time because of all that bread. Like I would just, just blow up. So if you guys didn't though, if you do want to treat sandwich, well, I am going to show you how to make this Reuben sandwich, maybe like in another one, because it does have to marinate overnight at least, or like I let it marinate for like a week. And like I said, I pull out a piece every time I want to make a Reuben sandwich. So I definitely will show you how I make my Reuben sandwich out of tempeh. It's delicious. But if you didn't see my broccoli rob meets Welsh rarebit sandwich video from the other day, you have to go check that out. That is like all time by far winning sandwich of my lifetime. So you definitely have to try that one. All right, let's make this soup and we have to make the cakes. I still have that banana from the other day sitting in the fridge because I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And it's not like I couldn't bring myself to do it. I think more it's that once I make this cake, I'm going to eat this cake. It's not like I can go visit my friends and share cake anymore. This is going to turn into like the drive by banana cake. Like, so if any of my friends or family is watching this video and you wake up tomorrow and you have a big hunk of banana cake on your front lawn, that was me. Man, this one I didn't even cut. Like what was going on here? What did I just eat the top parts off of this? Like this is pretty much the whole asparagus. Like what was I thinking? First I have to cook down my onions and garlic and get that time nice and effervescent in the bottom of my pot. I don't know if you can notice this, I've got my knee brace on. My knees have been killing me lately. I'm getting old you guys, I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. Can you believe this? Like I can't even believe it, but my body sure does feel it. My knees are just in really bad shape. I think I have tears in my meniscus. That's what it feels like. And I've been in a lot of pain the last couple of days and I haven't even barely been working out. So it doesn't make any sense. It's totally annoying. All right, let's get this on. That is on. Okay, so I put a pretty hefty dose of thyme down in the bottom. I think I want some coffee. 
Mm. I love the smell of coffee. Only organic coffee. Did you know that coffee and tea are one of the most highly pesticided crops there are? I put salt in my coffee. Cuts the bitter. I never use salt in my cooking. It's in everything, even my coffee. Like, who am I kidding? All right, let's get to this tempeh. All right, if you guys don't know what tempeh is, ooh, get out of my white pan. Um, ooh, this camera's so close. Your lips are so close. All right, come on, focus in. Ah, oh, look at Charlie Brown in the background. Hey, Chuck. Um, okay, tempeh is uh, this stuff. It's, it's uh, fermented soybeans. I love it. Come on, focus in, jerk. There you go. Can you see it? I should take it out of the package, then you'll see it better. Duh. Trying to figure out the smell of this. It's very neutral. It doesn't really have much of a smell one way or the other. I guess it smells a little beany. I mean, it is soybeans, and it's fermented soybeans. I don't know how the heck they make it. I suppose with all this time on my hands, I should watch a documentary on how they make uh, tempeh. Okay, so I'm just cutting, like, so each package comes like this. It's like, a, I think it's an eight ounce package. So then I cut it in half, and then I cut each half in half like that big shout out to the pj crew who else is rocking their pjs during this quarantine right just be careful alexa stop just be careful that um you don't get too comfortable in your pjs i mean we're laying around we're eating a lot try on those jeans every once in a while and if you're really serious try on your bathing suit that'll cut out all of this unnecessary eating believe me all right, we're boiling. I'm gonna bring that down to a simmer and just let that go for a little while. It's probably gonna take, I don't know, maybe about a half an hour so that my uh, asparagus gets really nice and tender. I put protein powder in my coffee with a splash of soy milk. It's really good that way. It sort of like thickens it up, sort of like how creamer used to for us. done this in a little while so I have to jog my memory as to what I even put in here. Give it a good shake, shake, shake. It's a pretty good marinade though. And then just store it in the refridge like this for like, I don't know, even I think I've had it in the refridge like well over two weeks before. Um, and I just take out a piece every time I want it. I mean, it's good to just have it in the fridge. Anytime I'm hungry and I'm like, eh, what am I gonna eat? Ooh, Reuben sandwich. All right, so check out that disgusting looking soup, right? I mean, that looks pretty terrible. So I've pretty much simmered this for way over a half an hour. review on this blender a couple of years ago when I was still trying to make this channel like a business. So much for that. <laughs> All right, I'm adding in pretty much the, I don't know, it's not quite the whole carton, which is um, four cups, probably I'd say about three cups of soy milk. You can use any plant milk that you like. I've, I've used almond milk before too. Now I'm adding in my mushrooms now because I don't didn't want them to be pureed. I want them to stay chunky. So you know I know I talk a lot about carbs and oh I gotta stay away from carbs. I've been saying that a lot 
in my last couple videos when I've been making like sandwiches and talking about the waffle. Um, I do want to just clear up that I do eat carbs. I eat carbs every day. I probably eat close to 200 grams of carbs in a day, but I do try to stay away from the heavily processed white carbs like bread and um, pastas and things like that. So I'll stick with sweet potatoes, quinoa, what else? Oh, the lentils. And so if you didn't see my one ingredient waffle the other day, that's literally made from nothing but lentils. So once in a while, I will treat myself to a real crusty roll or a nice sandwich bread, but I don't make a habit out of it. I eat oatmeal every morning, so that's carbs. I eat lentils, I eat quinoa, I eat sweet potatoes. So like I definitely get carbs and I'm not afraid of carbs. I eat tons of them a day. I just try to pick the right one. So that's what I'm talking about when I say, oh, I gotta stay away from the carbs. Oh, my knee hurts, my knee hurts. I'm hobbling around here today. Oh my God, I'm getting old. All right, so this soup kind of sucks. Um, I wouldn't recommend that you make it, at least not the way that I just did it. So if you want to make some asparagus soup, go find a good recipe because this ain't it. I'll still eat it. I'll doctor it up somehow. Not feeling it. But what I am feeling is some banana rum cake, baby. I don't eat carbs. Yeah, right. I ate like half of this cake the other day. I still got my bananas. It's going on like day three. I had them in the root fridge. They're totally black. Not totally black. Can you see that? They're gonna be delicious. All right, super easy recipe. One bowl mix, no mixers required. Just slap it all together and you're good to go. I got my bananas, coconut milk. I mean coconut oil or any oil, vegetable oil, melted vegan butter, like whatever you want to use. Brown sugar, but I'm running low on sugar too. The stores have sugar, I'm just holding off buying it. I just kind of feel like I don't want to buy sugar anymore. We'll see how that goes. I mean, how do I bake without sugar? I can bake without sugar, but then it's gonna be dates and bananas and all this other natural sugars that is a whole other learning curve that I'm not sure I'm ready for. Wait a minute, what am I doing? That was a lot. Okay, let me concentrate. Okay. Got it. Now, since I don't have brown sugar, which I would like to use for this, I um, only have white sugar. I'm gonna add a little bit of hey, molasses. Basically, that's all brown sugar is. It's just white sugar that's been sprayed with molasses. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of molasses to this. Instant brown sugar. Mm. Molasses loaded with iron right let me see it doesn't say that on here but it is all right get that all whisked up here's my exercise for today <sighs> big teaspoon of cinnamon now I am putting rum in mine, and the reason that I am is because my boyfriend's mom brought this back from Barbados when they went, and this is specifically rum for baking. Come on, focus. See, she even wrote on it, rum to make cake. Rum to bake cake. So this is definitely not any kind of rum that you'd want to be drinking, believe me. This is more like I don't know what this is. I mean, I trust her. It's rum for baking cake. So you could totally leave this part out if you don't do alcohol in your um, cooking or baking, but it really does make it nice. And then I'm gonna make a rum sugar glaze to go over this. It's so good. Like seriously, I made this last weekend between my boyfriend and I, well, I know I ate more of it. I don't even think he had more than like two pieces, 
That's really bad. I ate the whole rest of this cake. That was a lot. <laughs> that was probably like four tablespoons, maybe three, but that's okay. Plant milk, a little bit of salt. Okay, like I said, I'm running out of uh, flour. I don't have any more all-purpose flour. So, but what I do have is some whole wheat flour and I have some cake flour. Essentially, that's all all-purpose flour is, is a mix of wheat flour and um, cake flour. So I'm making my own blend here and I'm gonna use two cups of whole wheat flour, one cup of cake flour, two teaspoons baking soda, and whisk. I will have the recipe written down for you on my blog. Um, if I can get a decent picture of this cake, I will definitely make a blog post for it. If not, I'll just write the instructions and the uh, ingredients in the description below this video, which is what I know you guys would prefer. Okay, and last, I have one more banana that I'm adding in at the end. Keeping that one kind of chunky. Needs more rum. I gotta get my oven preheating. I start it on 375 and then I turn it down halfway through baking. As you've noticed, this has no egg replacer in it. This is another depression era cake recipe that needs no egg replacer. You could add chocolate chips or nuts to this batter. It's a very forgiving recipe. Get that on there. All right, nine by 13 pan, I've got it greased and parchment lined. My oven is preheating to 375. Man, I can't contort my body this way to keep out of the view of that camera. Ugh. All right, screw it. It's gonna go this way. Mmm, rum. Somebody asked me in a comment, do I still have my blue spatula? Yes, I certainly do. It's just that this one is always more readily available in the drawer and I just always grab this one first. I do definitely always use my blue spatula though when I am icing a cake. That's when I'll always opt for that one. All right, here we go. Pretty easy, right? This nine by 13, it's gonna take maybe like about 30 minutes, I think, 375, probably for the first 15 minutes. Then I drop the temperature down to 350 to bake the rest of the way. Toothpick test, you're good to go. Then we're gonna make a powdered sugar and rum glaze to go over this thing while it's still slightly warm. Mm, so good. to make. It took me about a week to pull it off finally, but honestly from start to finish, well from start mixing to baking, less than an hour. So I do have to let this cool slightly. I'm doing sort of like a poke cake, if you guys know what that is, where you basically just poke it. <laughs> the name says everything. Because I'm going to pour my rum sugar glaze over top. Now you don't have to do this part, especially if you're not using the rum. Um, the, this recipe would bake perfectly into round cake pans for a layer cake. I think it would be awesome with some chocolate ganache. Like this is a perfect banana cake for stacking and just whatever kind of filling that you want to go along with it. But I'm super lazy and I'm going super easy with this and I'm just gonna kind of glaze it with a sugar glaze. If you don't want to use the rum, again, just use um, a little bit of plant milk. It's like literally a cup of powdered sugar to maybe a tablespoon to two of whatever plant milk that you want. So, and you just adjust the consistency with either more sugar or more liquid, whatever you're using. Since I don't want mine to be like super disgustingly rum, I am putting a little bit of almond milk 
to thin mine out. I did make mine super loose, like really loose, because I do want it to seep down into the holes and just be a very um, inconspicuous glaze on the top. The cake is still warm. All right, I think that's it for today. We made some really disgusting asparagus soup. I've got my tempeh marinating so I can make some Reuben sandwiches probably tomorrow. I've got my delicious banana rum cake that definitely has to cool. And I am gonna to try to take some uh, decent pictures of this one so I can get it to the blog. And um, I guess we'll wrap it up for today's edition of Lockdown Kitchen. I hope you guys are doing really great. I have to say, I feel so much better now than when I first started even filming a few hours ago for this video. Like I said, I fired it up. I was like, I'm super low energy. I really wasn't motivated to even get behind the camera and do much of anything today. But I do feel so much better already. And I hope that these videos are giving you guys a little bit more of a little pep to your day. I love hanging out with you guys. I love your comments, so be sure to comment below. Um, love the suggestions, so keep them going. If one of them sparks my interest, I'll definitely do it. Like, you know, suggestions for um, ripping off somebody else's recipe and trying it out here. So um, yeah, keep it coming. Love you guys so much, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.